Hello guys, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, I will be presenting mapping of LGBTQIA spaces and HIV facilities in the Philippines on OpenStreetMap. My name is Miko. Uh, and just a quick backgrounder about myself. So I am a geographer, a mapper. I am an out and proud LGBT advocate. I have been an OSM and HOT volunteer since 2014. I am also the founder of Filipinas Chubs and Chasers, a growing community of Chubs, Bears, and Chasers from the LGBT here in the Philippines. I am also the ex-partner, student, office mate, workmate, and co-lead of Mr. Mapmaker David Garcia. He has been my professor way back in 2010, I believe, and uh, we've been through very much in the past years working together. So if you've been into one of his talks, in OSM conferences, I believe you've pretty much seen a picture of myself in one of his lectures or topics uh, by then. So I am here is because I believe that not all spaces are defined by straight line. Going through just a background of the Philippines or the country where I've come from, it's a very beautiful place with more than 7,000 islands. It's an archipelago in the Pacific. So we are known to be one of the most LGBT-friendly places in the world. And yet, we do not have an equality bill that protects the LGBT community from any form of discrimination. So aside from that, the Philippines has hosted the largest Pride March in Asia in 2019. We have uh, accounted for more than 75,000 participants for our Pride March only, okay? So, this happened last year in Marikina City, and yet, uh, even with that large number of attendees and allies that come together, uh, the LGBT community has continued, continuously faced discrimination in all aspects of life, in the workplace, in schools, in the military, in churches, etc. Additionally, the Philippines is also known to be one of the fastest growing countries in terms of HIV cases, and yet there is no consolidated data table map that shows any accurate location of all these places in our country. So that is one challenge that we have been facing here. Uh, one organization would show you a, a different a different list of HIV facilities for testing, for counseling, for treatment, for dispensary. Another organization has a list with a, a varying information on it and tables on it. And lastly, the Philippines has a strong and passionate mapping community in the country. So our community in the Philippines is, especially the OSM Philippines community, is very uh, supportive. Uh, with emerging uh, mapping communities. So they ver very much uh, guide us through the mapping in OpenStreetMap. And yet, uh, as of December 2019, we were able to notice, or some of my friends and I were able to notice that not a single LGBT place was mapped on OpenStreetMap. So these are just some things that we, to set up the context of what we have in our country, okay? So, I'd like to introduce to you uh, the organization I am representing. So, it's MapBex. So, MapBex is an online community of volunteers advocating for LGBT representation and inclusion on various mapping platforms such as OSM. So, MapBex is pretty much a play of word uh, with Map, map, map box. So, in our country, Bex or Becky means that it's somehow a comrade or an ally or a friend like if you have a friend that is from the lgbt community you can call him becky or bex so that's where the name of map bex comes from so currently our community is around 10 volunteers active volunteers wherein we help and we help each other to actually put the lgbt community on the map the idea of map bex stems from the thought that we would want to put or we would want to see the places that have meaning or gave us meaning in lives to be on the map so since if you are on the map it shows that you are evident it, it shows you are existing so we we thought of a way wherein we could push through the representation that there is a need to have uh 
anti-discrimination bill for the LGBT community. And we saw that OpenStreetMap or through maps, we are able to be represented or visible or evident since uh, this is what we want in the future. Uh, we would want to have a country uh, that, that, that treats us equally, that sees us equally. That's why we saw that uh, through mapping, this could be an avenue wherein we are able to be represented. Uh, way back in 2018, Filipinos Jobs and Chasers, the organization I uh, helped organize, uh, was looking for a way wherein it could contribute back to the society. So one way we saw was to participate in mapathons. Uh, and since then, since there was a super typhoon that will be hitting Cagayan region on the north part of the Philippines, we actually participated in it and and contributed in drawing building footprints in roads so that disaster response or the data could be available when the response is goes through after the disaster. Pretty much uh, more than 10 colleagues of mine from the organization participated. We learned how to map building footprints roads and that's where the idea came through wherein our LGBT organization was would be able to be an integral part in mapping places here in our country so since from a uh, uh, from a very small portion of my group we were able to extend it throughout uh, the coming years and as uh, and joined other mapathons hosted by hot by osm philippines and others uh, and it gave us a sense that aside from just partying drinking or just enjoying the night or doing whatever we found something that we could do together and enjoy also the company of each other in 2019 then uh, the group became bigger and needed to make sense of what it should do with the mapping community so instead of just drawing building footprints in remote areas for disaster response and preparedness it actually uh, was able to stumble upon uh, the Mental Health Awareness Project by Andy Tabinas and uh, coordinated with them, wherein we were able to see the direction of where MapBex can be bigger, can be better, uh, and was able and was able to find its niche inside the mapping community. So by then, twenty nineteen, late twenty nineteen. We were focused to map out LGBT spaces and HIV facilities for our PLHIV brothers and sisters, for our LGBT community, and put those spaces in places that have meaning to us uh, on OpenStreetMap. So on the first, the on the first time that the mapping community of Mapbex uh, organized a mapping party, it's the first ever in the Philippines, I believe. Uh, last December, uh, we're in groups from other organizations joined us and supported us. And this gave us direction towards 2020. So in a span of six months, by 2020, MapTex was able to conduct eight mapping events uh, from January to June. It has also hosted the largest LGBTQIA mapping party in the world. So we were able to tap 56 partner groups and more than 150 participants joined us in our webinar. So it's really, it was a really big party wherein we would need to, to get other organizations on board that there is this group focused on mapping safe spaces. There is this group focused on assisting other organization with their with their mapping needs and there was this group that wanted to mainstream uh the lgbt advocacy towards the mapping side so with that we were able to immediately get our gardener media attention from cnn philippines and gma news so kudos to that and we were able to establish strong partnerships with the academe ngos community organizations mapping groups etc uh, we can say that MapBex has one has been one of the uh, fastest growing mapping communities in the Philippines, as it has garnered attention from various organizations because of its timely 
and pressing advocacy and mapping LGBT safe spaces and HIV facilities. So since because not all spaces are defined by straight lines, uh, MapBex was able to develop four mapping uh, mapping platforms for the community. So the first one is LGBTQIA Safe Spaces Map. We have partnered with Pantay Pilipinas with this map, wherein it shows you the places where or municipalities, cities, and provinces that are protected by an, an anti-discriminatory bill or law. So local that 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 protects LGBT locally. And it also shows you uh, places that were nominated as LGBT safe spaces in our country. So you could visit the website at bit.ly slash LGBTPH. You will be able to get a quick preview about it. And we use various tools uh, in getting the data from crowdsourcing from, from nominations by LGBT organizations and groups. So pretty much we are able to add 50... Around, around, around that number, more than 50 LGBT safe spaces on the map. So it features uh, safe amenities, safe workspaces, safe health services, and safe organization. So we're putting that on the map. So after we are able to validate and coordinate with the LGBT safe space or the owner of the safe space, we then, that's where we put it actually on OpenStreetMap. The second map that we're doing currently is the HIV facilities map. So pretty much this was the bulk of the initial MAPEX uh, struggle since data from various organizations was different from one another. So the data from this organization is different from the other one. And yet we were able to consolidate it through the process of uh, coordinating with this organization. So currently, I'm proud to say that the MapBex database of HIV facilities is currently the largest number of facilities that were able to be uh, consolidated or collated by a group or an organization. Uh, we were able to tandem with uh, various HIV advocates, advocate groups eh, during the COVID pandemic eh, to support them with the maps or the location of uh, medicines for HIV individuals. The next process of the HIV facilities map is actually validate the, the data uh, wherein we will be needing to call in all 600 plus facilities and validate their information from phone numbers, emails, websites, contact persons, addresses, so that we can be able to put it on the on open street map. Yes. Uh, the third and fourth map that we've created was in partnership with Mental Health Awareness. So we need to create a space or a mapping platform wherein people can uh, share their stories of either love, life, emancipation, etc. or stories for discrimination so that people can be knowledgeable of the experiences that we as the LGBT community are commonly facing. So there are stories that were added through the MapBex stories and the stories of discrimination and bullying, uh, wherein anonymously people can just put pins all over the Philippines wherein, and read those stories for them to appreciate. So moving forward, um, we from MapBex would like to enrich the relationships with various organizations by introducing mapping. So I believe that the LGBT community is an untapped territory for mapping volunteers. And this is one entry point wherein we could go into and get the help from their community since a lot from the LGBT community are very techy, are very young, are very able just with the right guidance. Uh, they'd be able to give or contribute a large number of contributions in mapping. We would also like to continue support in disaster response mapping uh, in the Philippines. So we are in tight partnership with HOT, with other mapping organizations in the Philippines, wherein we would want to still aid them because once we've finished all the other maps or the, all the other projects that we are currently facing, we would then default to going back and assisting uh, disaster response mapping or mapping of remote areas in the country. So a lot of places here in the Philippines are still not mapped and I've been in most of them 
And that's one thing that I think where our community can stand out as well in providing support in disaster response mapping. We would also like to continue to reach out to further to further organizations. So not not all cities in the country have LGBT organizations, and we would want to put them on the map. We would want to them to be connected to other organizations, and have that connectedness. And that's very important, especially in any communities. In in the numbers that we are able to connect, we are able to also foster and empower our communities within them. And lastly, we would like to implement the nationwide project and add more LGBT safe spaces. Uh, there were a lot of challenges that were faced by MapDex throughout uh, starting. Basically, it was a very roller coaster ride for the organization. Ideally, the first thing that, that we had difficulty was finding the niche within the community. Since there were a lot of people mapping roads, people... There were already groups mapping schools, mapping buildings. Mapbex needed to stand out so that the advocacy did not just feel like we're just mapping. It needs to be somewhere that is very close to our heart, and that's where we able where we were able to find our role in this mapping community. And then from there, if we are able to instill in the seeds of passion. On the and purpose within the hearts of our LGBT community members. That's then we are able to reach out to more mapping activities, mapping events, and contribute better, contribute more. Secondly, it was difficult getting the attention of various organizations since uh, a lot was was competing for the attention of the media or social media. Uh, Mapbex needed to stand out with this advocacy and make sure that everyone is on board. Or at least everyone would know what Mapdex is doing for this community. So that then started only by late May or early May, wherein we were able to reach out to a lot of organizations and partner with them, uh, especially through the Pride Month Mapathon that we conducted. But before that, it was very hard to actually ask for people to, hey, can we partner? Hey, do you want to be to join us going going through this mapping activity a lot of people was very skeptical of the technical side of mapping and that's that's where we made sure that we need to invite at least a person two persons so that people can actually have the feeling that this mapping portion of mapbex is really not difficult it's just more of like answering a survey putting it and putting a pin onto a place etc so more or less, we were able to break that barrier by, by, by this June and more people are getting more aware, Mapbex getting more attention and getting more partnerships. And that's wherein we are able to actually survive because hosting these projects and these activities actually need support financially and, and logistically. Uh, people were wanting to be volunteers. They would want to do this, do that. And that's where uh, the third problem comes in. We're in. It's more of an organizational thing. We're in, I think, with the lockdown, with the quarantine, it became di more difficult since everything was online. There was still a need to have physical connection with your new volunteers, your new members. And... Uh, that became very difficult, especially just doing things on online. So, and because not all spaces are defined by straight line, I would like to leave this note as a conclusion that hopefully the open street map community would be more embracing for emerging new communities. Uh, let us always put into ourselves that uh, mapping shouldn't be bounded by just drawing four points and making a building. Mapping shouldn't be coming from just data from imagery, G data from GPS points or GPS tracks. Mapping shouldn't be very technical. Somehow mapping or we should adjust towards making more tools and making it more accessible to people. Because, because I think mapping is very integral in anyone's life that it's necessary that we use it every day. We use navigation every day. We use... A mental maps in our head go go to get to one point to another thus thus mapping shouldn't be just for those who know how to make maps 
those who know how to use OpenStreetMap, and those who are accessible to these technologies. So we should always remember that the maps that we create are not just for people who know how to map. It should also be for everyone. Maybe in the future, the LGBT community would not need to map out LGBT safe spaces. Because in fact, all spaces are safe. Maybe in the future, the HIV community do not need to map out the HIV facilities in their countries. Because in fact, it is already integrated in any mapping platform that all hospitals have HIV facilities. All clinics in all cities have HIV facilities that cater to the HIV demographic. I, I, and to that note, I would hope that you guys would always remember that not all spaces are defined by straight lines. And thank you very much for coming. Uh, and I hope to see you soon. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Thank yeah, thank you so much for the MapBex presentation. I am Trudy. I'm co-hosting with uh, Hiva. Yeah, so uh, you could you can put your questions in the in the pad so that we can ask him. Yeah, so I'll be reading some of the questions and he'll be giving us the answers. So one person is asking, do the things you map like self spaces change? How frequently do you have to check the mapping? Um. So so this is actually based on uh, the number of nominations or places that are being mapped. But currently, we are mapped more than or less 50 to 60 places. And we normally check it in in three months' time. So the mapping that we've done previously uh, are already updated since some, some stores, some restaurants have been closed because of the lockdown. So updating is really needed as well in... in to, to adjust, especially in the times, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. So another person is asking, um, are these maps secret somehow? As, like, are they really safe to be up in the open? Because authorities can use them to track down the community members. Um, this is one of the fears that actually the LGBT community is very scared of because this then becomes public and live to everyone. But then we, from the community, understand the risk uh, of putting up this LGBT safe spaces. And they themselves adhere to... They themselves adhere to... They themselves adhere to the idea that uh, we can also adjust the location of these points to a proximal location nearby. So there are some cases of LGBT organizations that they don't want to put the actual location, but we adjust it a bit uh, to it. Uh, ideally, this is one of the conflicts that we from MapBex struggled in the starting points because we also fear that maybe we can be targeted for hatred, for bigotry, uh, and yet, we still continue to do it because we would want to show or we would want to, to exhibit that courage that uh, there is strength in numbers, there is strength in being courageous about telling other people where we are. Uh, we go to the point as well that me growing up as an LGBT kid, uh, I didn't know where to go. So if, if this tool or this maps can help a young kid growing up to identify uh, wholeheartedly who he is, then I guess we have served our purpose from MapBex. Yes. Wait. Another person is asking, how have you contributed during the COVID time? And what, ha what impact has MapBex had during this time? So uh, maybe through the COVID lockdowns, uh, I guess MapBex was able to help uh, HIV organizations and advocacies uh, in map with the data that we were able to have already to locate it, to prepare for maps uh, for the PLHIV community to know where the location of their medicines are. So some people would be going to the hub or the hospital 
to where they can get the medicine and they'll be able to see if it's walkable, it's bikeable, or what. Uh, another thing, it also made more communities uh, for the LGBT community to be more interconnected and be there for each other. Yes. So I, I guess an addition to the map that we were able to share during the COVID lockdown wa garnered 23,000 views from various uh, people who need the map during that time. Thank you. Yeah, so another person in the um, is saying that we, the community, we are so few, like the community is so few, that we need a map of where all we live. So can we find each other? That's what he is asking. Can we find each other? Like he needs things like apps to find to be able to locate each other every time. Maybe they maybe if they're in Lusaka, they can be able to find each other. Yeah. Um, I guess uh that's what Grinder <laughs> is there for, or Tinder, if you want to see the individual. But uh in for Mapbex, we actually would want to focus on the LGBT organizations that provide support and guidance for growing uh, LGBT kids. Uh, so that uh, if, for example, you're in Luxaka, we can also advocate in mapping areas or LGBT organization there so that uh, the right people can guide uh, those who are pretty lost in, in, the, in the journey of identifying themselves. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, there, there's another question, which was, uh, do you have any recommendations you'd give to the LGBTQ communities around the world, including the spaces? Uh, observing the map on OpenStreetMap, actually, we've seen that there are a lot of LGBT spaces that already been mapped in Europe, in the United States, in some parts of uh, some parts of Asia. But I guess it 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 focuses on the business business type of LGBT spaces where people can meet. But uh, what, moving forward, I guess we can also put in LGBT organizations on the map so that uh, because not only I don't look for LGBT spaces just because they're restaurants in an area. Like I would like to meet other people like myself in another country uh, with, with that can support who I am, right? So so pretty much what one thing I could I recommend uh, for the world, rather the universe, just, just kidding, uh, would be to let us help each other map out LGBT organizations as well uh, all, over in the, all over our countries. Uh, that's it. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, you have a lot of people uh, commenting positively about the project and they really don't have a lot of questions. I think we've asked all the questions. If I've not asked your question, you can let me know. Yeah. What? <laughs> What's the question? Maybe we could ask you, Miko. So Miko, this is Heather, Miko. Thank you so much for your incredible presentation. And there's lots of comments in Telegram um, and I'm sure there'll be more. Um, so if you were a young um, person just getting involved with the street map, what would you recommend for like for this particular community, like if you're like from a human point of view, like so you've talked about the map, you talked about the community. What do you what do you need to do as a young person getting involved in OpenStreetMap? What would you recommend for them? I guess um, what one thing that I could recommend is be your genuine, authentic self because everything will just shine out from there. Like I understood OpenStreetMap as mapping. I love mapping, but merging it with what I am and who I am makes it more different and more at the core of my heart. So that, and, and I guess to all the LGBT uh, kids who are uh, finding themselves, uh, let this be a lesson that being LGBT uh, you should be proud of who you are and you can make a big impact to the world uh, and you can you could help save lives through mapping and that yeah that's that's what i think <laughs> sorry i'm nervous <laughs> you're doing fantastic and and honestly you know i hope that people are inspired by your comments as much as i am trudy do you have any more questions and kyle how much more time do we have <laughs> Got another five minutes. 
five minutes. Trudy, do you have a question or anybody else? Do you have questions and put them in the hack pad and Trudy and I can help make sure that we verbalize it. Uh, I don't have questions, but I just, I'm just uh, fascinated with what he is doing. He's really doing a fantastic job. A lot of people can't come out really in the, even the OSM community, but he has come out and he's trying to really make sure everyone is confident of who they are. I just want to say thank you for what you are doing. And I hope a lot of people in the community could stand up and be like you and come out. And I think we shall save a lot of lives. And because I've been doing some research, because I have a lot of friends of mine who are in the LGBT community here in Lusaka. I have a lot of issues because of acceptance. But if we can, the whole community can embrace and be part of the project, I think it will really help so much. One of my friends is trying to commit to suicide. He's so much depressed. So we are trying every time to talk to him. I think we shall uh, save a lot of lives in, in, also when we really support each other. I'm so impressed with what you're doing, Nico. Good luck. Wonderful, Nico. All right, so there's a lot of resources on the pad that Nico's done. And Nico, do you have any closing thoughts? I think we have one minute left or so. Any other kind of closing things that we haven't talked about yet? Yes, um, I guess uh, I would like to tell the world that you go out and map your LGBT safe spaces, put it on open street map. Just be sure that uh, the proper uh, people would help you and uh, don't be afraid. Don't never be afraid, especially in times like this in, here in the Philippines. We are fighting for a anti-discrimination bill that should have been passed so that we could get the same rights that we need, we deserve. Uh, don't be afraid of that. Uh, and the world will definitely go be better. Don't don't worry. It, things will get better through time. Just have that heart. And I would like to thank and get this opportunity. Since I have five minutes, I would like to thank my sponsor. No, no. I would like to thank my friends. <laughs> Uh, the Open Street Map Philippine community, the GEO ladies who have been talking uh, yesterday. I'd like to you to uh, I'd like to say thank you to Ministry of Mapping, my Grab family, uh, my friends who have always been very supportive and who trusts that this uh, mapping project can make a difference. Uh, happy Pride to everyone, and see you soon next year. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be there. Yes, Miko. Yes. Hopefully we meet in person. And again, just congratulations on your work. And you. also and also for being so supportive of new mappers potentially and, and focusing on safety. I think, you know, while this is important to map, I think it's important to do it with the local communities and in a safe way. So thanks again and um, have a really great morning or afternoon. How late is it there in the Philippines? You said you're outside of Manila. How late is it there? Yeah, it's uh, 6.40 in the evening. Yeah, right. we're preparing dinner and I'll cook my rice now with this dream. Yes. Uh, I would like some dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys have a great time.